Hey everyone, Robin and Kim here with our health chat. And today our subject is, because it is Defeat Diabetes Month, we're gonna talk about type one diabetes. And I'm gonna tell you just no, to no, start- type, type two, type two. Type two, sorry, type two diabetes. We just said <laughs> we're not talking about type one. So I had it in my mind, sorry. Okay. Anyway, I'll tell you, first of all, where Defeat Diabetes Month came from. It's observed every April, um, and it's an, it's an initiative of the Defeat Diabetes Foundation. So there is actually a foundation. It's the DDF Foundation. And I'm going to tell you some statistics because I was blown away by a lot of these statistics. It is projected that around 643 million people worldwide will be living with diabetes, and that's type 2, by 2030. 643 million people, and that's worldwide. Whoa. I know. Through this observation, the DDF raises awareness about the preventive preventable nature of type 2 diabetes, and we're going to go over some of those preventable natures for you, um, and it focuses on your lifestyle and dietary changes, um, and that's what the DDF is trying to do. And then just to kind of go over a few other statistics, I'm going to put my glasses on so I can read these off. So 37.3 million people have diabetes, guys. 30. 7.3 million people have it. That's, That's in about, the US. That, it doesn't say, yes, it is in the US. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. And it's about one in every 10 people. So look at the 10 people around you, one in every 10. And one in five don't even know they have diabetes. And that's the scary part yeah. because pre-diabetes, you don't even know you have it. Um, 96 million. Adults, more than one in three, have prediabetes. So one in three people have it and they don't even know they have it. More than eight in 10 adults don't even know they have prediabetes. And if you have prediabetes, pre losing weight by eating healthy and being more active, in which we're going to go into more detail about that, will help that prediabetes for sure. The cost, $327 billion of medical costs. Wow. and lost work, mm -hmm. lost wages for people diagnosed with diabetes. Um, the risk of early death for adults with diabetes is 60% higher than for adults without diabetes. Oh, That's yeah. a lot, 60%. Yep. That's high. Um, and then I won't go into, um, I mean, what it can go to like deadly is like blindness, kidney failure, heart disease, stroke, mm -hmm. loss of your toes, your feet, your legs. So, I mean, it's huge. And, and I was just saying to Kim before we came on here, I feel like people don't take this seriously. And it is so serious. Type 2 diabetes, it's so serious and it can be prevented. And that's what Kim's going to talk about. Yeah, um, type 2 diabetes. We're not talking about type 1, uh, but we're ta talking about type 2 diabetes, which is kind of known now as a lifestyle disease because it really comes from our choices we're making with the food and especially the standard American diet, the SAD diet, which you've heard us talk about before, um, plays a huge part because we're, our, process, our diet consists mostly of many people, processed foods, fast food, foods that contain a lot of sugar, hidden sugars, uh, starch turns into sugar, flour turns into sugar. I mean, it's just, you know, so the key is to eat a low glycemic diet, which means foods that will not spike your blood sugar um, and will give you more rolling spikes than, than, than high spikes coming down because that's, that's um, what really is hurting us. So uh, and knowing your A1C number is a measure of what, if you're pre-diabetic or have diabetes or you're in a great, great range, you want to make sure. Uh, I think when it's we hit 6.0, that's considered starting the pre-diabetes and you want to um, I can't, I meant to look at the range. I forgot to look at the range for that. Your range. I have the ranges. Oh, you have it. Look okay, good. Up. But um, I want to share something with you guys. We, a year ago, um, I get, I get my A1C. I'm not tested a lot, but enough that, you know, I'm aware of what it is. And a year ago it was tested or was tested. Uh, yeah. Over a year ago, it was like 5.6. 
which I thought was kind of high for me, but um, I did a four week, like a gut healing program and it went down to, to 5.4, which, cause it measures the last three months of your, um, of your sugars basically. And, um, and I found out like I did 23 and me and I found like, I do have a, a, a genetic disposition for type two diabetes. So I'm like, Oh, well, you know what? And you know what they say about genes? You're not necessarily going to get let your genes aren't going to necessarily, um, uh, not perform play so, in your life. Yeah. Play in your right, life. Right. Play in your life. So here's what the genes do. The genes load the gun, but your lifestyle pulls the trigger, whether the gene yep. expresses itself or not. That's why I was looking for the word, whether your genes don't always express themselves. And please remember that because I can't tell you how many times people have said to me, oh, well, it runs in my family. So I'm just destined. I'm like, exactly. no, you are not it, destined. I, I think that is so hopeful because it's like, you're not yeah. destined to get what, what you're, what, what, what's going on in your family. If you take care of yourself in the right way. Um, right. So Here's anyway. your numbers. You want your numbers? Right. Yes. A normal A1C, right? That's what you asked me for. Yeah. You, a normal A1C level is below 5.7. A, oh, level of 5. 5. Oh. a level of 5.7 to 6.4 indicates pre-diabetes okay. and a level of 6.5 or more indicates diabetes. Whoa. Okay. I was so, wrong on that's all right. That's all right. Okay. okay. Thanks for clarifying that. So, yeah. so I do have some food swaps that you can use if you're saying, go ahead. Sorry. Before you do the food swaps, yeah. can I show them what you were talking about? The levels. And yes. I'm going to show you guys. So listen, I'm wearing a, um, a CGM right now, which is a continuous glucose monitor because I'm seeing a cellular health physician where, cause I'm going through some things and I think it's from my shoulder and all that, um, with cortisol. But anyway, this is the CGM here and my phone, it constantly picks up, um, what my rate is, which Kim was just talking about. So this mm. kind of shows you so I was at a really good level, boom, boom, boom. And then this morning I worked out and look, it peaked. And I was saying to Kim, at first I was confused. And she said, yeah, but remember working out is a stressor. And so it made my uh, glucose levels shoot up because I was teaching a bike class and then it went down and it's been pretty level, you know, the whole time. Um, and I have a level that my doctor wants me to stay in. And we're just doing this for like a couple of weeks and you have to have these prescribed by a physician. You can't just go and get them yourself. But I can tell you, if you feel like you might be pre-diabetic or you have a lifestyle that you feel might lead you to diabetes, I would highly recommend going to your doctor and asking him to get one because it will open your eyes, <laughs> yes. and, you know, it, because, where it might not otherwise have been opened. And the other thing that I wanted to touch on, Kim, before you go into the other foods is I was just reading a book by Dr. Mike, he Mark Hyman. Um, it's his latest book, uh, live forever. Yeah. Forever and young isn't it? or young forever live forever. Not oh, live yeah, forever. young. Oh, sorry. Wait, no, no, no. It's oh, young, young forever. Young Cause young it's forever. not the song forever young. It's forever, young right. forever. <laughs> yeah. So young forever by Dr. Mark Hyman. And in there, he said something that stuck with me. Um, and I'm pretty funny about my foods and like eat very healthy, but he said, um, sugars and starches. That's what you really have to watch out for because your body, when you eat a piece of bread, your body doesn't know once that hits your mouth, the difference between that piece of bread and a pixie stick, because it turns to sugar. And I was like, boom, that with me, like just really resonated because, well, I used to love pixie sticks. I don't eat them anymore, but I'm like, and you know, and I don't eat that much bread, um, but it does make you stop and think about it. Your, your body doesn't doesn't make it doesn't make a difference to your body system right whether that right. is so right. go ahead kim yeah. yeah and food is information to your body every every piece of food you eat tells it what's going to happen you know tells your gut what to do tells your hormones what to do and yep. and then cannot be it could be a great thing depending what you're eating it could be a not a great thing depending what you're eating so but i want to show share some great swaps because you think oh, i gotta give up my favorite foods no you don't um so instead of regular pasta which the it's kind of like boring uh flour, um, go for spaghetti squash. It is so good. That's my preferred anyway. I mean, it's got such a great taste to it. It's got a great texture. Um, zucchini noodles also called zoodles and shirataki noodles. I love those. And also 
they they have chickpea pastas out there, um, lentil pastas. Those are much better choices. Um, Just make so sure with the ones that you buy that they don't have other additives in them because right, some of right, them do. Of course. So yeah. just watch your, yeah, the your ingredients on that. Yeah. And then for rice, like cauliflower rice for mashed potatoes, do mashed cauliflowers with cauliflower, which is amazing. For mayo, do mashed uh, uh, avocado. Instead of cereal or oatmeal, go for the chia seed pudding or chia, yeah, chia seed pudding, which is really good. Instead of dairy yogurt, go for coconut milk yogurt. Instead of breadcrumbs, go with coconut flakes. Instead of bread, unless you do like Ezekiel bread, a sprouted bread, go for lettuce wraps. Those are really good. Um, and then corn tortillas, um, though, instead of those, there's a great brand called Siete, S-I-E-T-E, S-I-E-T-E. -E. They use cassava flour, which does not spike your blood sugar. It's, and they taste amazing. So they make great tortilla chips. They make tortilla wraps all with cassava flour, all don't spike your sugar, your, um, your sugars. So really good choices. Um, and then instead of conventional crackers, try almond, chia, flaxseed. There's Mary's Gone crackers that are really good. I love those. I found some great seed crackers. They taste, taste much better than regular crackers anyway. Um, instead of soy sauce, go for coconut aminos or liquid aminos. I have Bragg, I use Bragg's liquid aminos and it, I yep. think it tastes better than soy sauce. I do too. And instead of whipped cream, there's coconut uh, coconut whip you can go for. So, you know, really finding the healthy foods. And we, you know, of course, promote like these healthy foods, not only for your, look that are low glycemic, but also good for your hormone health, also good for aging. I mean, they're all like, basically it's a whole food diet, but we are so much, what's become normal now is processed food. Processed food and fast food has become normal and, and eating whole foods has become becoming extinct, <laughs> which right. we don't want that to happen. Right. Is becoming then, yeah. I want to add something else onto sure. this too. And this is something that I'm struggling with because I'm seeing this doctor. And she gave me the news that I am exercising too much. Imagine that, you guys who know me. <laughs> but the research is there. And I have some of it right here, what it does to your blood sugar. So what it says, it says, get the right exercise. You do not have to spend hours in a gym to get exercise benefits. Yep. Even just right. a 30 minute walk can help. Vigorous is key for effective exercise that helps balance blood sugar and lower insulin levels, but not overly, right? And not too right. much of it. Getting sufficient sleep. I'm also struggling with that. Um, poor sleep damages your metabolism. It spikes your blood sugar, um, messes with your uh, cortisol levels, and then control stress levels. And that's your cortisol as well. Um, chronic stress, if you have it on your body constantly, um, the levels of insulin, cortisol, and inflammatory compounds um, all increase. And that's what I'm having because of this. My body's been totally under stress. And which is making this be under stress, which is making everything else go crazy and haywire. So I'm a true testament <laughs> that this is true information, you guys. It really is. Yeah. And the other thing I was going to say, here's a hack you can do. So after you eat dinner or lunch, anytime, but especially dinner, go out for a walk after you eat, because that's yes. going to help lower your glu blood glucose levels as well. So all this stuff can be preventative to uh, help you not um, get your... Uh, blood levels out of wax. So we want to keep those yep. even. And so, yeah, go for a walk afterwards, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever, just go for a nice and the weather's getting nicer. So no excuses. So anyway, and above all you guys like take it seriously. I mean, yeah. it's, it's serious. I, I talk to people all the time because I'm in the fitness industry and, you know, they ask questions and I, we do like events and things for people. And some of the responses that I hear from people, like just taking it lightly. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. I'm still, are you working out more? Are you trying to bring, you know, your blood pressure down? Are you, they're like, oh, you know, it is what it is. And I'm just like, I, it makes my heart hurt because I want everybody to be healthy and happy and live a long, long life. And so try to take it serious. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So we'll, we'll keep talking about it because we care. Yes, we will. Yes, Karen, we will. Sharing is caring. <laughs> yeah. All right. So All have right. a great Wednesday. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.